Welcome, welcome to the Anxiety Summit. And before we start going, I want you to take the time to celebrate yourself for having the courage to ask for help, for having the courage to ask for support, for even having the courage to support you. Yes, it is not easy, and but you did it. You did it. So celebrate yourself. Take a moment and second. It is hard, but that is the first step to your healing. That is, it means that you are gazing at the light. You see the light and you don't want to see the light go away. So I commend you for that and I want to celebrate you for that. So let's applaud you. Okay. So great. So today's topic is overcoming anxiety with self-intimacy. And I will share different practices for you to uh, build on your arsenal tool, but most importantly for you to experience and test it so that you are able to select the ones that works best for you and I move the needle towards your healing journey. And because you want to overcome your anxiety and I'm just here to facilitate you, to hold your hands, to guide you and to show um, and to share with you tools that will be helpful in your healing journey, then you can select and make the plan for you according to what works best for you. And if you don't know me, I am O. I am a hardware coach and I help you heal your broken heart after a breakup, a divorce or a loss of a partner by unlocking your traumas, creating a healthy mindset and self-intimacy and shifting your pain into uh, ecstasy okay and today again our topic is overcoming anxiety with self-intimacy and self-intimacy is my favorite tool for you to grow resilient to heal and to deepen your relationship with yourself so i will share my screen Okay, perfect. So again, welcome to the summit. And if we resist our emotions, we resist being humans. If we resist our emotions, we resist being human. And so when you have your emotions, emotions is energy in motion. And depending on your experience, you give a cognitive, a positive or a negative connotation to that emotion. And then that transforms into feelings. So what you want to do when you suppress a feeling, that would be anxiety. It would uh, be suffocated. And at some point, it will boil down and it would explode. And we don't want that. We want to embrace our emotions. We want to understand what are they trying to say to us. You want all our, our emotions, they come with a message and it's to you to decode that message using your mind, your body, your soul, and your heart because that message is a key to your healing. That message is a key to your growth. But when we don't do so, that's when we linger into the negativities that we have and that would transform even into anxiety, but that would also transform into your physical body as uh, headaches or uh pain that you might feel so it's very very important i want you to get into the habit to embrace your emotions to ask questions to see what are you being protecting from where did you get that belief and how can you do to repattern especially if that uh, belief is no longer serving you okay and uh, let's do the high-fiving your heart exercise. So sit down on your chair, be comfortably uh, seated, shake your shoulders to release any tension and resistance that you may have. Close your eyes, bring your 10 fingers to your heart, exercise pressure so you can activate it and close your eyes and breathe in with me, breathe in through your nose. 
Breathe out through your mouth. Breathe in through your nose. Breathe out through your mouth. Everything that you have out, I say again. I said out loud with me, I am safe. I am loved. I am okay. Again, I am safe. I am loved. I am okay. One more time. I am safe. I am loved. I am okay. And hug yourself and stay in that position with your eyes closed and shaking. And this is a great tool that you can use when you feel any negative emotion or feelings. That if you feel anxiety, you feel shame, you feel guilt, you feel depression, you wouldn't do that. And what that will do is that you are giving yourself the self-validation and the self-love that you are looking for in people. And uh, that would strengthen your self-acceptance, your self-validation, your resilience muscle, but you also experience a sense of peace. And if you did, I know it was a short period of time, but you might have felt your uh, energy shifting. You feel that wave of peace coming over you. You feel the energy moving. It's why we activate and we put the pressure on your heart because you're high fiving your, uh, your heart. You're saying, I love you. I see you. I matter. I am enough. I am love. And that is a great tool that was inspired by Mel Robbins that you can use and uh, use every time you are feeling any anxiety. Okay. And about me, I already gave you about me, who I was and stuff, so you can just read on. And before we continue, I want to send to you a secret invitation to download my tip to self-dating. Like I said, self-dating is my favorite tool to reach self-intimacy. So you can download, you will get a copy of that deck and you'll be able to download that and I will share more as we go. You can also uh, download the workshop workbook because I will pack a lot of information in the 30 minutes. I will give you experiential practices that we don't have time to complete together, but I will give you the guidelines. So with the workbook, you want to set the time aside and you can do it all at once. You can do it on different dates and allow that sacred space and space for you, uh, that sacred space and safety for you so that you can go deep into your soul and so that you can reconnect with yourself so that you will reconnect with your true self and start releasing some of the energies and the beliefs that are no longer serving you okay so what is relationship anxiety? Relationship anxiety, what is it? It's obsessive and excessive worries, insecurities and fears about your relationship, about your partner and yourself in the relationship. And what will cause relationship anxiety will be your mother-father issues. When you were younger, how was your relationship with your primary caregiver or givers? Were they loving, caring? Were they attentionate? Was that relationship non-existent? Were they not existent? Were you abused? You going back to the core would help you understand why you believe what you believe today, why you see yourself as you see yourself today, and why you show up the way you show up in your relationships, right? And did you experience any childhood traumas? Were you sexually abused? Were you physically abused? Were you in a war zone? That would also impact. So you want to go to the core. The first um, step to your healing is acknowledging. And sometimes we don't want to embrace our shadows because we are afraid of what we can see. But today I want you 
to embrace your shadows. I want you to go deep into the habits because that's where you will find the key to your healing. Once you're down, that's where you will find that little light. And then once you hold on to the light, the light will expand and expand until it takes over the darkness. But you can't find that light if you are unwilling to get dirty, if you are unwilling to dance with your shadows. So that's what we're trying to do, going back to the roots, right? And then also, if you have any past relationships or experiences where you're cheating on, where you are, your relationship with yourself, where you are told that you were not beautiful, that you were unworthy, that would impact your relationship uh, with yourself, but also with others, and that would transform into anxiety, right? So at the core, you are battling with fear of a commitment and vulnerability, fear of intimacy, fear of rejection, and fear of abandonment, right? So for you, what is it for you? Are you experiencing all of those or is it one that is more uh, defined for you? For me, I would say it's fear of intimacy because I believe that if they really get to know me, that's what I was uh, going through. If they really get to know me, they will realize that they don't love me much because I did not feel that I was worthy from my past, from my grandparents decided that I was not, even though I was black, that I should not be loved because I was not from the mother or from the woman that they wanted me to be. So growing up, I carried that without even knowing. So it was impacting my relationship with others, but also my relationship with myself. So to me, the big, big, big pillar is fear of intimacy. And how is it manifesting in, uh, is it manifested into your relationship? For me, it was self-sabotaging, right? Until I realized one day, oh, wow, that's what I do. It was self-sabotaging. I would self-sabotage and overthinking. Every was, is it chilling me? Always thinking it's chilling because I'm not worthy or trying to walk away before they do so that I will validate the belief that I had. Okay, so how would it manifest in your relationship, self-sabotaging behaviors and securities and overthinking, okay, and any other uh, symptoms that you may think of. Okay, so relationship anxiety, the causes. Some of the causes, like I said, would be your primary relationship with your caregiver, right? And if you had any attachment difficulties, how was that relationship that would impact your relationships? And also, did you experience any emotional neglect or abuse that would trigger a low self-esteem, right, or even low confidence, self-confidence? And then if you suffer from general anxiety, that could also cascade into your relationship and that could have been picked up from your past. Right, if you were cheating on, so you will be on, you would experience anxiety every time you are in a relationship because you're unsure if the person will repeat the same scenario as the other. And let's go take a step back and let's measure your self intimacy spectrum because I said for you to the key to your healing for overcoming your anxiety is self-intimacy, as hard as it might be. And even some people might think that self-intimacy has a sexual connotation, but no, it's you going deep internally, you going deep and reconnecting with your essence, who you are, knowing who you are, accepting all of you so that you are in tune with your mind, your body, your soul, and your heart. You can decode the messages and repattern what needs to be repatterned and release what, what is no longer, uh, what is no longer serving you. So when you will get the work, when you will elaborate more on that, but you will pick up a, your journal, a pen, you want to answer with the first thing that comes to mind. Why are we doing so? So that you bypasses your conscious mind, you bypassing your protective self and you're connected to your subconscious mind and your heart because those hold the key to your healing. They hold the key to your beliefs. They hold the key to your habits by dancing with them, by knowing the beliefs and how they were formulated, you'll be able to repattern them. 
So here is a question. Oh, here are the questions that you want to ask yourself. How do I feel about myself? What self persona do I find easy to accept? What self persona do I find hard to accept and willing to hide by any means? Do I have a love hate relationship with myself? Do I struggle to receive love and why? Do I struggle to give love and why? So you would take your time, you would answer, you be open with yourself, you be gentle with yourself, you be non judgmental, you write. And I want you to keep writing until you have nothing else to say, until your pen and your head is no longer moving, because you will get a lot of information, and that information will help you strategize a plan to overcome your anxiety. And that is also helping you reconnect to your essence and understanding um, understanding why you feel this way. Like I said, the emotions are messages. So how you respond to the messages that you receive will be or will make all the difference. Okay. Now, how can you hear from relationship anxiety? Like I said, the title Overcoming Anxiety with Self-Intimacy is a key to your healing will be self-intimacy. Because when you get to connect with your true self, you get to accept yourself, you get to connect to your essence, you are able to decode the messages that you receive, messages by your emotions and your thought, and you're able to release, you're able to heal, you're able to go, you're able to build your resilience, and you are able to repattern. So self-intimacy is key. Self-intimacy is even the pillar of self-care, self-love, and self-acceptance. And by um, having, by deepening your relationship with yourself, you will also improve your relationship with others. You will heal faster because, again, you're decoding the messages that you are receiving. So what is self-intimacy? Self-intimacy is full acceptance of self, the good and the bad, what you are most proud of, you accept it, what you are uh, ashamed of when you don't want anyone to see you still accept it because it is part of you and you are and you acknowledge that you are perfect just as you are. And every day getting the happy to ask yourself this question, do I fully accept myself with my flaws and all? Do I fully accept myself with my flaws and all? And that is the daily check-in so that you know where you stand on your self-intimacy spectrum. If you need, if there's an area that you need to work more on. And you see that as you go through, as you uh, stagger the steps the practices the understanding and you deepen your relationship with yourself you will see that slowly your anxiety will start to dissipate the key is when you fight an oppression and you oppress it like i said it will explode but when you express it the emotion will dissipate but you need to acknowledge and you need to go to the core you need to get intimate with yourself you need to dance with your shadows so that you can get to the optimal level it's not going to be easy it's going to be hard but you have to commit to yourself you have to be willing to do the work because it will be rewarding in the long run okay so here are the practices that we will cover today. This is the first one. And again, you will do it on your own because I'm packing a lot of information, a lot of arsenal tools. Give a try to all of them and repeat as you go. And as by doing it over and over, you will deepen your relationship. And then you can discard what you don't like most and focus on the ones that you like. Okay. So this first exercise is facing the mirror and it's a two-phase process. And you will get a you will need a full life mirror top to bottom and you will also need a smaller mirror you'll need a journal and a pen and what you will do is it might sound weird but bear with me because again you getting to know yourself and one way to know yourself to get intimate is to accept your body 
all of you, but your flow is the part that you don't like. To me personally, it's my stomach that I have to have a loving faith relationship with. So you are learning to embrace yourself. You're learning to understand your body cues, understand what your thoughts, what is your resistance, your tension is a powerful exercise. So try it before you discard it, okay? So you will stand in front of your mirror. You will stand naked. And you would uh, gaze at your eyes, you would gaze at your body, all the inches, and even the parts that you dislike, you just observing, you stare at it, you pay attention to your emotions, to your thoughts, to the conversation with yourself, you pay attention to any tension that you may have in your body and any struggles that you may have, you might even discover the parts that you don't like about your body. You wanna do full circle, front, um, uh, sides and back as much possible as you can in the back if you don't have two mirrors. And um, once you do so, you wanna be non-judgmental you want to be accepting and you want to accept what comes to and let it let the energy flow and you might need to cry you might cry and if you do it it's okay it's because you're releasing the energy and that is one way to do so and that is the energy that is no longer serving you the second phase is a bit harder especially if you've never done it but give yourself permission to go that far because it would be a turning point for you and again we'll build a self-intimacy and this part is about your body knowing yourself embracing your body and all inches of your body so you want to sit down still naked you want to open your uh, legs if you have a full mirror going down you can use that if not that small mirror because i want you to get up close with your cookie with your uh, flower with your vagina with your vulva whatever that is for you so you go up and you look deep, you gaze, you're not masturbating, because that's not what we're talking about. You are observing, you are confronting it, you are facing it, and then you pay attention to your emotions, you pay attention to the thoughts, what you like, what you don't dislike, what you never even notice, and you want to part it, you want to see, you want to see the form, you want to touch it, and not touch so that you come, so that you can have the texture and sit with that, observe it, see what comes out for you, what is your resistance, what is the resistance coming from, and you will see that you get a lot of information packing through, and it is okay, see there, no expectation, no judgment, no rush, see there and understand what is coming for you, and release what you need to release, and you might repeat it as often as you need to, and you see that every time you'll be uh, easier and every time you will get one step closer to your deeper self. The second exercise is dating yourself. Like I said, it is my favorite, favorite, favorite tool to reset intimacy. And dating yourself is um, has different components. You can do it even though you are single or you are in a relationship. Dating yourself is getting to know yourself. It's building your resilience and self-intimacy muscles. And it goes deeper than going on a date. You want to, what you can do, some examples would be stimulating your five senses, moving your body, having a spa treatment, going on a solo date, a solo dinner, on a solo trip. What you do is you're stretching outside of your comfort zone. You want to stretch outside of your comfort zone, but not too far because then you abandon the journey. I want you, you want to stay on the journey because that's where you will reach self-intimacy and that's where you will grow. So you want to stretch yourself enough, but not too much so that you won't do it. And by doing so, you get to know yourself. You get to pay attention to your cues. You get to decode your cues. You get to voice your opinion you get to empower your uh to use your voice you get to connect to your feminine power to your true self to your truth and you get to embrace it that is 
the beauty of dating yourself it goes deeper than what you think it goes deeper 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 than what you think in truth and that's why it's my favorite um tool and i'm looking at my notes here what you can do is um you will have the workbook right I want you to um, go download the workbook and download the self-dating tips and make a plan of what you can do. You want to set up your goals. You want to be able to measure success. You want to set up the time frame in your calendar so that you do it every time at the same day, at the same time. And then you want to make reservations. You want to set yourself for success to make sure that you will not back down. You might even need an accountability partner. I trust me. The first time will be hard, but as you go, you will get to know yourself. You will get to really experience yourself at a different level. Experience yourself at your different level. And I know that it might be hard now, especially that you're going through anxiety. But if you keep pushing, you keep putting one leg in front of the other, you will see that your spectrum would extend. And every time you will go, you will go where it was uh, comfortable yesterday will no longer be your measuring point the next day or we call a month from that uh, date. So give it a try and uh, share with me how you experience it, okay? The third exercise is having a conversation with your inner critic. You might call it your inner self, your inner child, your protective self, or your mean girl. You want to have a conversation with your inner critic. Know that your inner critic is not the enemy. Your inner critic is trying to protect you by any means of a situation that you lived in the past so that you do not repeat the same ordeal. So your inner critic is your friend. You want to make best days with your inner critic so you understand your core, where are your beliefs coming from, what are you being protected from, and compromise so that you can shift that belief and find a new process that will grow you and that will help you uh, reach your optimal self and the next phase in your life, right? Especially if you validate and you realize that the belief that you had is no longer serving you and that you no longer have factors to validate it. Because what we do is we will put ourselves into a situation when you self-sabotage so that we can validate the beliefs that you want. But you want to challenge that belief. And when you challenge that belief, you might realize that that belief has no space here and that you will have the strength to let go of that belief and incorporate a new belief. That's what we're doing here. Again, self-intimacy, right? We did body we did with the um, facing the mirror we did um uh reaching outside of your comfort zone with dating yourself and reading your cues and this is the mental part where you want to mentally be uh have mental intimacy right so how you will start you will name your inner critic you will name her, you will embody her character and emotions, make it as a persona, right? And then you will get into a meditative state. You will visualize the workbook has all the steps for you to get it started. You will visualize, you will call her by name and uh, tell her that you want to have a transformative conversation. And then you will initiate the conversation First, you would acknowledge that you are aware that she is trying to protect you. You will share appreciation and compassion. And then you will ask the questions, what is she trying to protect you from? Where is it coming from? Where was that belief formed? And you get, once you're in there, the questions will come. You want to follow your guts. You want to trust your heart, your intuition, 
and be there there is no wrong or right answer and you will see that every day will be different and you might not even get the answer right that moment but as you go the days that will follow you will get that answer so once you do then you will have the conversation you will come up with a win-win solution for both of you and a new process to repattern and to grow right and then once you're done with that you would hug and you will say goodbye and you will exit out of your practice. You can do it as often as you want, especially every time that you feel uh, any um, emotions such as anxieties or fears or anything like that. Try to understand what you feel, especially if you have it in the moment that will be packed with information right there. Okay. Then, yeah, so much uh, practices. When we reach self intimacy, you want to have self intimacy at different levels because that's when you will get to know yourself. And again, like you've known, uh, and I kept saying, self intimacy is the key to overcoming your anxiety. That is not, you don't stop there. It's a muscle that you will need to strengthen. And every step that you will take, you will grow stronger and stronger. And as you grow stronger and stronger, your anxiety will get smaller and smaller as well. So the practice, you want to have practices for you to reach intimacy, for you to reach physical intimacy. Physical intimacy, one example, will be stimulating your five senses. Then emotional intimacy will be paying attention to your triggers and see where you feel the emotion in your body. Mental intimacy will be paying attention to your thoughts. Spiritual intimacy will be asking yourself who you are and what is your purpose. And soul intimacy will be connecting to your essence, to your true self. And you can do so by dating yourself. And sexual intimacy, you can do it by uh, paying attention to your sexual energies. But you can also do so by uh, revisiting the mirror exercise or doing hypnotherapy or even asking yourself the tough questions. Okay? So as you can see, self-intimacy does not revolve only around masturbation, like most people think, but rather it is a very powerful tool that you can use to overcome your anxiety. And by doing so, you will deepen your relationship with yourself, but you will also improve other relationships in your life. And you will get, you will have the stamina, you will have the courage, the confidence that you need to go one notch higher in your life purpose. So that is all I wanted to cover today. That's a lot of information. It's packed, packed, packed with a lot of information. So make sure that you download the self-dating tapes to go along with that, that you download the workshop and that you set time aside to complete the experience or uh, exercises. And that you also, I think I also have the affirmation guide that you can also download. And those are great tools and this will get you started on your healing journey, on your process to overcome your anxiety. So I want to hear from you. So please connect with me and share your experience. And you have all of my information here. And again, celebrate yourself. Give yourself kudos for taking the first step into your healing journey and choosing you and asking for support. I am so proud of you and I stand strong with you and I'm here with you, okay? So until we meet again, have a wonderful time and make sure that you complete your practices because that will make the difference in your journey, okay? Thank you and have yourself a wonderful time.